Hello my creative friends, Olga Sobi here and welcome to new acrylic pouring video. Today, I'm going to create a painting inspired by Butterfly Nebula. So Butterfly Nebula or Bug Nebula, it's a super beautiful, unique, enormous cloud of dust and gas in constellation Scorpius. And it has a very complex and unique structure. So it's a bipolar a planetary nebula and it has two primary lobes that have these rounded shapes. And they do look like butterfly. I think it's so beautiful. So today I'm gonna use my ring to try and create those rounded shapes, rounded lobes in this nebula. And uh, use this huge cookie cutter again to separate my uh, positive space from negative space. So keep exploring different shapes and variations in my Dancing Universe series. And if you haven't seen my planets yet, oh my god, definitely check them out. The playlist is right here. This technique is super cool. Also, in the next video, we are going to do the moon. Ah, it's going to be out on Saturday. I have prepared something super special for that video. So definitely join me this coming Saturday. I can't wait to share that video with you. And today, let's get started with this butterfly nebula. Let's go. All right, let's get started with the base. So I want to do a sort of multicolor, uh, dirty pour. So this base is all nice and dynamic with dark, deep, cosmic colors. Here I have some greenish blue and I want to just I'm just gonna pour colors right in. I don't really need to layer them. I don't mind them or we mix in. So that one was black mixed with some uh, red violet. This is oriental violet. I think I also want to add some magenta in it. It's a lighter color, but it dries very transparent. So I think it will also help to achieve some transparency within this flow. Yeah, this is plenty. I can always add some more if I desire so. So I'm just going in quite a random motion. Oh, beautiful colors. I love those colors. I think they're just perfectly what I need. And the touch of my dark color around will help me tilt it without needing to lose too much paint. Let's see that I have a little something in here. Let me grab a toothpick. Where is it? The here. Okay, I need to start tilting again so I can see better. Just a little piece of dry paint happens. Okay, I think this base is absolutely perfect. I really love all the movement. I don't know if you actually can see it in camera. Maybe it's just all book in black. But there are some nice violets and blues and they nicely blending and creating a very dynamic flow. Okay, so I'm gonna use the ring to create first one part of my uh, butterfly nebula and then the other. I'm just trying to think. So one can go like this. The corner is a little not inside, but that's okay. For the colors of my sections of this nebula, I want to have some white, some iridescent red blue. It will give me beautiful shine on a dry result and also turquoise blue. Yeah, so all these colors. And the core of my nebula, it has to be white. So it's nice, bright and warm. Just adding some white here and my ring will help to keep all this blowout inside without shifting it here to maintain that shape. I'm adding this iridescent red blue again, such a beautiful color. It looks sort of pinkish, but it dries with nice actually violet tint to it. Some magenta. I think magenta colors, violets, they're perfect for space because they dry transparent and that really increases the feeling of depth in it. So some turquoise. 
This is a pack color, so I don't want to use too much of it or it's going to be too much opaque and will blend with white, creating two solid open areas. A couple drops of this iridescent blue-green. Torch it, so let's blow it out. Might have used too much white though, I hope. Let's see how these cells will take over here or not. So, I think this is perfect. Now let's carefully remove it. Nice! Ah, oh, the shape is just amazing. I love it. I love how this iridescent sort of shines from under there, right? So I might actually work on this corner a little more. Some of my base color here. Looks a little more like a butterfly. I want this corner to be a little more dark and solid. Well, I love it. This lacing is fabulous. And this is what happens when using these beautiful iridescent colors. Okay, I wiped the ring and now let's do this second side. So, let me see. I want it to be sort of not fully symmetrical, I think. No, we don't really need to be 100% symmetrical with this composition. So this ring, I shifted a little bit towards this corner and this one, the opposite, a little bit towards upper corner. So let's repeat all the steps. Some white in sight. Pick up just a little bit of extra white. Just use a syringe for that. Again, do exactly the same colors. So iridescent, red, blue, some magenta, turquoise blue, a few small drops of iridescent blue green. Okay, let's blow this out. Oh, I love all the transparency in this one, so gorgeous. Better. Okay, let it. Let's let it sit for a few seconds, same as with the other one. And that lacing is forming and pushing towards the core. So that's exactly what we want. This is beautiful. Ta-da! <laughs> well, it's not the ta-da yet. Okay, I just <laughs> need to add a couple more things. But oh, I love it. I will connect this, of course, in the center. But while this lacing here is forming, same as on the other side. Man, that's beautiful. So I want to do the same thing on here. I want to make it look... I want this corner to be just darker. Yes, yes, see it's... I tried to do it a little bit like a butterfly shape, butterfly wing. Not super defined, you know, but very subtle. It's only you and I know. Oh my god, this is beautiful. This one I like better because it has, I think, better shape. I like that they, I have such distinct turquoise here. Here it's more blended in. This part is beautiful. Both of these are beautiful. You know, they're the same but different. I love this brighter pop of this iridescent overmixed with white, overmixed with magenta. Nice and beautiful pink color. Might dry darker, not might. It will. It absolutely will. Okay, so next step. I want to create a bit more of a connection here. No, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> you know, I think I'm gonna leave it 
I tried to do some, you know, lines here, but just doesn't fit with the rest of the painting. Okay. So last step, we need to add some stars. So actually, I'm gonna use some of the paint that I scooped out. It's not fully white, but that's okay. This one will be a little grayish, so I think it's even better. I will have some grayish stars. And after that, some white ones. So grayish will appear more like they're far behind. So the light doesn't reach us. That's good. Some bright white. Now oh, this is cool. <laughs> this is perfect shape of the moon. Should I leave it? I don't like this one. But this moon? Oh my god! This is cool. <laughs> I love it. I'm adding stars over my sections or wings of the butterfly uh, too, so that it looks more transparent and you know, like stars are shining through it as well. <sighs> I love it! The colors are beautiful. All right, you guys, I will let it dry. I think I'm gonna do the touch-up, so keep watching to see what we do with it. And I will be right back. Okay, here it is dry, and this uh, nebula butterfly was working out really well until it dried. Oh my god, it did not dry very pretty. Everything was fine, but it dried so dark, and I absolutely did not like it. So this part of the nebula, this is how it dried. You can see that, of course, white is quite bright, but all this section is so dark, so muted, and definitely not to my liking. So I was just playing around with it on this side, trying to see if I can make it work and if I can touch it up and make it look organic with the rest of the painting, but actually make it nice and bright and beautiful. And this is what I did. This part is finished. I actually really, really like it. I think this is beautiful now. So right now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks on how you can touch up your dry painting, also using fluid art techniques. So let's get to it. First of all, I want to touch up this part, the white part. You see, I made it more rounded and sharp. Let's go work on this section. So next we're going to do some blowing. And when blowing, I'm going to be using my um, metal straw for that. It's much easier to blow away from yourself. So just turn your canvas. Don't try to blow like this. I mean, you can do it, it's just way less convenient and way less control. To create this beautiful feathering uh, pops of color, we're gonna do our fluid art technique, but sort of on a smaller scale. So I'm gonna use all the same colors. I have some turquoise, some iridescent colors, and white. I'm just gonna blow them out in smaller sections. Now to connect this blowout with this blowout using a very small brush, I'm drawing the line from white towards the white inside of here. If there are some white segments inside here, I'm just making them a little brighter. So you're basically trying to create these lines. This side, it had a lot of this white lacing, so it was super easy for me to recreate this here, just to extend those lines here. See, I have less of those lacing, so I will actually need to draw them manually.
Hey guys, so here it is dry and finished with layer of epoxy resin. And if you take anything from this video, may it be the fact that not everything always turns out as planned. Trust me, with myself too. But I still wanted to share this one with you and I think that every time something goes off, it's really just a perfect opportunity to challenge yourself, to try out something new, modify in your painting. I think that now this one looks somewhere in between the Butterfly Nebula, the one I showed you as a reference at the beginning of the video, and the more natural, real butterfly shape. I mean, this shapes, they definitely look a lot more like a butterfly wings, but yet there is still some transparency and layers and all the stars, so it does have that space feeling, so definitely sits somewhere in between the two. I think it's pretty cool, there is just something about it that gives it a very dreamy vibe. I think I want to try doing a similar nebula again, but with adjusted color palette. What do you think? Would you like to see another try with the similar inspiration, but hopefully the better outcome? Let me know. And let me know what you think about the outcome for this one. Also, even though I'm not fully happy with my nebula butterfly, Check out this mini! Oh my goodness! I love this small planet so, so much. I think it's so pretty. It turned out really cool. And I just used some leftover colors, so it really makes me happy. I don't know. Small, yet super pretty. By the way, if you want to sign up for updates regarding my coming resin finishing course, the link is in the description under this video. Check it out. I'll chat with you in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video creating the moon. That one's gonna be super awesome, so definitely join me this coming Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay creative, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.